Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, like most of America, I support an all-of-the-above solution to this nation's energy needs. I believe we can have it all when it comes to energy. We can aggressively pursue renewable energy, nuclear energy, and other innovative alternatives while continuing efforts to expand our domestic supply of fossil fuels. We live in a country rich in energy sources, and Congress should encourage production from all available resources and technologies. Tonight I'd like to focus on a reliable and clean-burning alternative fuel, which is an extraordinary, in an extraordinary abundance right under our feet in this country, and that is natural gas. Located in my district in northwest Louisiana, recent estimates have projected the Hainesville Shell contains 234 trillion cubic feet of natural gas production potential. This would make it the largest natural gas play in the United States and one of the largest in the world, the equivalent of 18 years' worth of U.S. oil production. And I want to point out to you, uh, this is the crosshatched area, is the so-called Hainesville Shell. As you can see, it overlies several parishes in Louisiana, as well as several counties in Texas, a very wide area. Now, of course, uh, for those listening, shell is nothing more and nothing less than a rock formation deep down the earth, somewhere around two miles in depth, that acts like a sponge that's full of either gas or oil, and sometimes both. And um, we have uh, great methods today to extract uh, fossil fuels from these. But let me turn to some more statistics regarding the Haynesville Shell. It's provided massive injections of capital into the 4th District of Louisiana, my district. It's pumped $4.5 billion into the economy in FY 2008. It's created nearly $3.9 billion in household earnings in the same year. The greatest impact on indirect and household earnings was experienced by workers in the mining sector with new household earnings of $191.3 million in 2008. It's created over $30 million in, in new earnings in seven separate sectors. Number one, mining, $1.91.3 million. Healthcare, $56.7 million. Management, $46.6 million. Professional scientific technical services, $38.5 million. Retail trade, $35.7 million manufacturing 33.5 million, and construction 31.8 million. He created directly and indirectly over 32,000 jobs. The new jobs created by the extraction activities in the Hainesville Shell are widely dispersed across industries. Large impacts have been felt in utilities, 5,229 jobs, mining 3,808, healthcare 3,496 jobs, and retail trade, 3,433. Those are a lot of numbers, but I think you understand that the magnitude is what counts here. Conservative estimates report that state and local tax revenues increased by at least $153.3 million in 2008 due to the extraction activities of the Hainesville Shell. Needless to say, Louisiana is not suffering the level of recession and unemployment that, and even effects on real estate that many other states are today, largely due to the Hainesville Shell. With some parishes are reporting a 300 percent increase in sales tax collections. Now I want to talk a moment about how we get the natural gas out of that shell that we're talking about that's two miles deep in the earth. The method is called hydraulic fracturing or Hydrofracking is a more common term. This method has been used over 60 years and is responsible for 30% of America's recoverable oil and gas. Of wells currently operating today, wells currently operating today, over 90% have been fractured at least once. Environmentalists and their allies in Congress are escalating their assault on affordable and reliable energy with legislation that would place regulation of hydraulic fracturing under the Safe Drinking Water Act, SDWA, a law that was never intended for this purpose. 
This legislation would have a far-reaching negative impact on energy and energy producers and consumers alike. For years, this process has been safely and effectively regulated by individual states. And of the more than one million wells fractured, not a single case, not a single case of drinking water contamination has ever been recorded. In my state of Louisiana, three different agencies have oversight related to this process. So you see, it's not an un unregulated process to begin with. First is the Office of Conservation of the Louisiana Department of Natural Resources, Louisiana Department of Environmental Quality, and finally the Department of Health and Hospitals, which tests potable water. Additionally, these agencies already work closely in association with existing federal regulations under the EPA. As illustrated in these graphics, current energy practices ensure multiple levels of protection between any sources of drinking water and the production zone of oil and gas. And that's what I'm going to illustrate. The gentleman's time has expired. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. No. The chair recognizes uh, Mr. Inglis from South Carolina. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Last night in Spartanburg, South Carolina, we had a town meeting and uh, folks were joining in this debate that we're having here this week in Washington about uh, climate legislation. There were folks who spoke passionately about the need to take action. Um, and I'm in agreement with them. There is a need to take action and to discharge a stewardship obligation. Then there were others there who um, really didn't buy the science of climate change. And so uh, there was a good discussion, a good debate. There's going to be a debate here.